John, if you want to see into the future, you stand on the shoulders of giants. Align yourself with people who have forged the path ahead of you. R&D, baby. Rip off and duplication. I love that. Take what other people have done and you know, adopt it, but just add your personality. Add your spin. So those are the four keys to having a mindset. I just totally went on a rant and a tangent, but I hope anybody watching this, if there's one thing you take away, fix that mindset. I mean, we're going into a market where 10% of agents are gonna be doing 90% of the deals. Welcome everybody. This is Beyond the Sale Podcast. And today I'm so excited to have Joe Moretti with us. Joe is a part of the Sims Real Estate Group, also Sims Coaching Systems. Joe um, had, was an influential part of our business growing, and I'm so excited to have Joe on the on the podcast today with you guys. Um, so, Joe, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us. Uh, John, my pleasure, man. Uh, you and Rachel are like some of, like two of my favorite people to collaborate with, and I'll tell you, man, I was super pumped when uh, we got to hang out in Orlando together for a few days. So it's nice to Zoom is great, podcasts are great, and all that kind of fun stuff, but. I think so much is lost in actually masterminding and collaborating in person. Um, so super grateful that we got to hang out uh, in Orlando. It was very for a very short time, but at the same time, uh, yeah, I had a really great time. So how you doing, man? Yeah, it was. It was awesome. It was good to see you guys. We, we had so much fun at the EXP event, um, just hanging out and you know kicking back. Sometimes it's all, you know, a lot of times we're just doing work and then there we're just having fun. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Um, so Joe, I, I want to bring people on the podcast that can really add value to the real estate community and in our sphere. Um, and you know, you've helped us out so much and we wanted to, I wanted to reach out. You were like one of the first people that I wanted to speak with. And, um, thank you. And so, yeah. So Joe, I, I, I think the way that we got connected, um, I kind of share that story for the, the background of, you know, of everything. Um, the way that we got connected was Rachel and I grew the team to a certain point and we were looking for somebody that I, that I could go out and look at and model and learn to, to grow our team to the next level. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so, so we came upon through a few references, we came upon you and Jason and the Sims coaching system. And since then we, we doubled our production and everything has been is was was been has been awesome. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited to have this podcast with you and just kind of share everything um, with everybody. So Joe, uh, just to start off with, like I start off with everybody. How did you guys, you and Jason, get connected, and how did you get involved, like connected into the real estate industry? Man, what a, what a great question. So I, I get asked that a lot. It's uh, we're very like unlikely partners, to tell you the truth. But as you kind of sort of hear the story, you're like, well, yeah, why wouldn't these guys be hanging out together? So um, I'm actually not a real estate agent. I'm just going to put that out there. I just play one on TV. Um, <laughs> that's kind of like my, my, my tagline because I am not a real estate agent, which is hilarious. Some people go three or four years and they're like, well, how many, what did you do in your first year of production? I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not an agent. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. So how Jason and I got connected, it, it's a funny story. So I, uh, Jason was my real estate agent. So my brother-in-law is a real estate agent in a, a different town, about an hour and a half away. And I had mentioned to him, you know, hey, I'm thinking about, about selling my house. We've kind of outgrown it a little bit. And you, can you list it for me? He was like, well, no, because, you know, because I'm in a different market. Uh, but I know a guy and I'm going to get a guy to give you a show. This was on... Uh, oddly enough, I can remember the day that conversation with my brother-in-law was December 30th, 2018. Mm -hmm. And then he said, yeah, I know this guy. His name is Jason Samard from the Sims Real Estate Group. I vouch for him. He's amazing. His marketing's on point. You'll love him. And literally 24 hours later, Jason calls me. And I've had some really bad experiences with real estate agents in the past, like horrific experiences. Sure. So when Jason called me, he basically just kicked into process mode. So I'm Canadian. So for all you American listeners, I'm going to say process and it's going to drive you nuts. So brace yourself. <laughs> so, so Jason uh, Jason gave me a show. It started putting me through the buyer's process, right? Asking me questions like, you know, so what is it about your home that's not working for you? It's got you exploring other options. Talk to me about your past experiences in real estate and just asking very thoughtful questions that nobody's really asked me before. 
So about three or four days later, uh, he came over and uh, he did his whole buyer like uh, li like listing presentation at my house and um, very, very well prepared. And he came in and oddly enough, the day before he had come, there was a giant windstorm in our town. So uh, he had knocked on the door. My wife answers the door and I'm actually outside uh, working on like putting some soffits back up. And I had a friend who did gutters and soffits and he kind of took the time to come and help me. And my wife comes in, she goes, yeah, you know, the, the real estate agents here, do you mind just like putting your stuff down and talking to them? And I'm like, well, no, I'm the least handy guy in the world. And I've got somebody here helping me. You deal with it. So she goes back in, comes out two minutes later, get your ass in the house. But what Jason had done was embrace the process where, again, like I was fully prepared that she could get the number for the house. I would go sit outside. But Jason, again, went into that presentation mode where he's like, look, it's so important to have both decision makers present. Why don't you tell your husband that I'll come back another day? What day works best for you? And that was when she was like, give me a minute. I <laughs> uh, went through the bar and saw, I don't know how much Jason liked me in the beginning. I think I put up a bit of a fight. And, and I was like, oh, that freaking real estate agent. So I uh, went through the went through the buyer's process. I'll show you that, the listing process. And it was just, it was a very seamless transaction. Like everything was just meticulous. And so uh, that's something that was, again, for me, that's really attractive in an agent. It's an agent that has their processes dialed in. And so naturally me, I was in the finance field. So I spent the last 20 years uh, in finance. I've been a, you know, a, a district vice president of various like city bank offices. I have um, built commercial businesses, commercial hubs. I've done like branch management. I've done like, you name it, man. I've had teams of hundred people report to me at any given time. So I come from a, a finance and leadership background. So um, the first conversation once the host sold was like, you know, man, I want to thank you for the, for, for helping me. How can I help you be successful? And so I had given Jason about like 150 like hockey tickets to our a local hockey team. Uh, so he can like, you know, celebrate that with his clients and just trying to pay it back for amazing service. And um, oddly enough, I, I was with a, a, one of the largest credit unions in town at the time sort of running a, a large branch and I had gone away to Mexico and come back. And as I was coming back from Mexico, there was a message from Jason and he's like, Hey man, I want to talk to you. And I'm like, Oh, like there's something wrong with the house. Like what's, what's going on. And we met for lunch and he just kind of said, look, man, um, I like your values. You seem like a pretty nice guy. You got really nice sneakers. So I'll tell you what, why don't you walk away from a 20 year career in finance and come run a startup company with me, which was Sims Coaching Systems at the time, come run a startup company with me. He goes, I've been sort of running this off like the side of my desk for the last few years, but I want to formalize this and create a coaching company. And I'm looking at him like, I don't have the faintest idea how to number one, like start a small business, let alone coach real estate agents. But I looked at him and I said, you know what, man, you got me. That was it. I walked away from a 20 year career to follow my real estate agent. Um, and I'll tell you, it was the greatest risk I ever took in my life. The greatest. So since then, we've built a coaching company. We have over 500 coaching students worldwide in our various uh, coaching programs. Um, and we started that program off like literally I started working in like a lunchroom on a laptop and we got our first student, then our second, third, fourth, fifth. We were absolutely decimated by COVID, decimated. And so we had to find different pivot points. So kind of ended up creating, we have nine, nine or 10 different income lines uh, for everybody, and not only in our real estate group, but everybody who's in our coaching, um, in, our, in, our, in our coaching business as well. So we found a way to create pension plans for our administrative teams through, again, through coaching and through revenue generation. And... It's been amazing. So I, I I started the coaching company with Jason. That would have been 2019. By the end of 2019, Jason had exited production, which was his dream after about three, three and a half years and focused solely on coaching. But it left this weird spot where nobody was running the real estate business. So again, my buddy Jason was like, hey, Joe, you want to take a shot? And so... Here I am. So I'm the general manager of, of the real estate team. Uh, so I do that two and a half days a week. And then I spend two days a week sort of dedicated to, to coaching. So 
Um, Jason's actually, it turns out, I mean, he's my closest friend. Our, our kids are best friends. And uh, since then, I've actually sold the house that I bought with Jason. And now we're next door neighbors. I, I don't know how that worked. <laughs> we live across the street from each other. Um, at any given time, there is a Samard at my house, which is amazing. But the collaboration, the masterminding that we'll do like over like a tequila on ice or going for a walk or just sitting on like my porch or in his living room watching like watching the UFC fights is absolutely brilliant. So um, for us, it was, you know, we became amazing business partners first, best friends second. And that way we're able to kind of like pivot back and forth. And that's my story, man. And I'm sticking to it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I think that that was part of it. I mean, you, you mentioned a lot there, but <clears throat> you know, just the, the, and we'll go, we'll go more into this, but the pension plan and the, the agent retention and the collaboration mm -hmm. and um, that you guys, the way that you guys put everything forward and how, how you run everything, I think was really, really interesting for us. And, uh, and also how Jason, you know, doesn't, a lot of real estate agents will, will pull a lot of the money out of the pot right and put it in their pockets but how jason's is really contributing and sharing yeah and and you both and both you guys are just sharing it and, and and realizing like this is we our vision is big we have a big vision and if we want to accomplish, accomplish that it's going to require everybody to get on board i man truer words have never been spoken um and you know jason like i said it is 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 one of my closest friends he is my business partner like uh, it's funny, we always joke around, if one of us is getting into a fight, both of us are getting into a fight. And he, uh, Jason Samard, I mean, he is the most genuine person I think you're ever going to meet. So, I mean, lucky me, I'm I'm fortunate to be here building something great, like I said, alongside the most, the most amazing business partner that anybody can have. And so through Jason, uh, what I was able to do is align myself with, again, people like you and Rachel, right? People that we can sort of help coach and mentor along the way. And the one thing I'll say is, um, with all the people we've coached and we've mentored, we've never taught anybody how to sell. That's sort of first and foremost. That was one of our goals was, I don't think you need to be a salesperson to be successful in real estate. I will stand by that. You need to be a great listener. You need to ask really great questions and you need to be empathetic to somebody else's situation. I think that that's the key to success. And also, again, have that sort of that mindset element in play. Um, but for us, you know, finding a way that we can sort of give back like coaching, the coaching program for us, that, that was a passion project, right? In the beginning, what we charged, we were charging people a thousand dollars a month on like no commitment, just give us 30 days notice. We're not, we're not your gym membership, like 30 days notice and you're good. We were charging people a thousand dollars a month to show them how to go and, and create you know, half a million, like seven figure real estate business. This has never been about us like making money. This is about us again, just giving it back and collaborating with people that we know, like, and trust. Yeah. And I think that that's something that is so lost in this industry because people look at this as like the habitual sales industry and that human element is pushed out so much. So again, that's what makes us a little bit different. And there was a point and there still is a point. We actually, we only take about half the coaching students that apply to work with us because for us, we like to collaborate with people we like. And again, it's not about a, a cash grab. It's not what it's about. is again, about adding value to people that we see that potential. in. if we only take about 15 high ticket coaching students on uh, every, every, every run, Group coaching, a uh, bit of a different story, right? We sort of opened that up to our whole like uh, collaborative movement, the EXP, um, like downline, the mastermind. We open that up to everybody. But if you want that one-on-one -on -one, like implementation, then again, it's almost like it's a vetting process for you and us. Hmm, hmm, interesting. And congrats, John, you passed. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> glad to have you, man. Um, so, yeah, love it. Um, so Joe, um, how, so when, Joe, when, um, excuse me, when Jason hired you yeah. and you guys were starting, how had, what was the goals of where you guys started? And I know you kind of a little bit of that, you yeah. talked about it and then, and then to where you guys are now, what was, what was the goals? Like, Hey, look, I want to, we want to start a coaching company and this is what we're trying to do and blah, blah, blah. 
You know, our very first goal was to get large enough that it could pay for itself. So we drew very, very small salaries. Um, I basically, I cut my pay in about like a third from what I had been making like the day before when I was in finance, cut it down to about a third. So I had to learn very, very quickly to like live below my means. Right. And I, and again, so I, I did feel the pain of somebody who's again, like maybe a newly licensed agent. And so did Jason as well, because all of a sudden this overhead starts creeping up as you start building systems and processes. So some of the things that we learned along the way was, uh, again, investing in systems, investing in infrastructure was absolutely critical for us. Right people, right time, right place, but also always making sure that we gave more in value than we ever took in payment. So some of the goals that we initially set out, um, goal number one was to make more than we spent. So we, we created a, a one page business plan day one where we evaluated what our marketing pillars were. So where are the top four places that we can get coaching students and what is the budget that's going to be affiliated with each one of those pillars? So for us, it was social media. It was YouTube. It was people in our sphere or people who Jason had talked to in the past. And it was, uh, we, we hadn't implemented it at the time, but it was a hope that we could sort of create like a pay-per-click, you know, where people could learn about coaching and it would auto, it would generate a lead. And that marketing pillar actually took us about three years to formalize. Because what ended up happening is we nurtured sphere, social media, and YouTube so much. So that was one of the things I think we could have done better in the beginning when it came to business planning was allocating funds towards that. Um, we also really got granular with uh, skills training. Like there were skills that Jason needed to, um, you know, um, enhance or, or increase, I guess you could say, that he had to 10x to be a better coach. There's so many skills that I had to learn to be a better coach. I mean, you have to think about it. Like I had no real estate experience other than buying and selling a few times over. Like I had to learn buyer's process, listing process, lead conversion. I had to learn everything, relearn everything I knew about business planning, culture creation, hiring, onboarding, training platforms. Because in the corporate world, that's all laid out for you. Yeah. And it's so cool because, I mean, I, th I think of Jason and one of the things that and you guys, and, and is you guys move really quickly, like quicker than most, right? So he did like what we did, like 120 deals his first year, and then was doing up to like 300 deals and within three years, and he's out of his business within what, three years or so, or something, four years. Mm -hmm. And same here, right? So like you guys had a, you started off with a plan, came up with your pillars, and you just went and said, hey, let's go. And now you're up to, you went from zero to 500 in what, what have we had two years now? Yeah, they're about like yeah, it's 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 been about it's we're going into our our four it'll be our fourth year in uh, in fourth year in, okay. in March I believe, but yeah, I mean like and we've had like you know where we'd kind of like have a lot of coaching students something would happen we'd lose, like we always lost like forty percent of our in the first few years we would lose over half of our coaching students once November December hit, right? People would tighten their belt. Who's the first? You know, I'm not making any money right now. Who's the first, like, look, look, look at a sports team, sports team tanks. Who's the first person that gets axed? The coach, right? It's the very first person. So in some cases, if somebody didn't want to hit the field, they you know, didn't want to do their activities, they go, well, why am I paying for a coach then? And we would get axed. So we found very quickly that there was like a lot of peaks and valleys. So for us, staying consistent with activities day over day, right? Making sure we had you know, one to two social media posts going out. We were in contact with all of our students. We used to have a Friday reach out campaign where I would actually literally start at seven in the morning Pacific all the way till I guess it would be like nine o'clock at night Eastern. I would be on the phone with every single one of our coaching students. Hey, wanted to touch base. How are things going? Just to try to like, you know, who do you know? And another one, who do you know that we should know? Right? Just asking that question over and over so we try to leverage our sphere a lot in that first those that first few years until we were able to implement that um, like the Google and Bing based uh, pay per click just like real estate agents do. So very cool, very cool. So you know, um, 
what so I guess let's go into the organization now Please, yeah. of of like the Sims Real Estate Group. What, what does it look like? Um, let's talk, let's go that direction. And so you have Jason and you have you. I kind of see you guys as somewhat of partners. And we we talked about this in the, in the past, like as both visionaries, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, and and then how does that look? So the way it works with Jason and I, yeah, we are definitely partners. Um, you know, we, we also hold hands and take long walks on the beach together. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Well, I would, I guess. If there was somebody I was going to do that with, it would probably be Jason. But um, yeah, so Jason is, uh, like, and like I said, the, the most amazing business partner anybody could ask for. Um, so Jason, when, when we look at the corporate structure from the real estate team, so Jason is the CEO. So CEO, founder. Um, underneath Jason would be would be me so the the, the title that um that we ran with for me was general manager but it's all it, it is a very sort of like jack of all trades type piece so um and then sort of like going down for me you'd have caitlin our office manager so caitlin is in charge of our administrative team so we have an absolute assassin we've listing coordinator we've got a transaction coordinator uh, we also have a graphic designer. So we actually have an in-house graphic designer. Plus we have a social media marketing and branding coordinator as well. So those all roll up to Caitlin, the office manager. And then kind of on the other side, we have our inside sales agent team. So those those do roll up to me. And that is Jamie Wicks, um, his, his older, more handsome brother, Freddie Wicks. And then we have Joe Langdon as well. So... Uh, we have, again, we have basically seven day coverage for inside sales. And then we have our agents. So we have, uh, and all of our, our client, our inside, I would say inside sales, but the term we use is uh, client care or client relationship managers. And then we have uh, 13 licensed agents currently. So it's, it's not a big team. Like people seem to think we're massive, but really we're not. We, and it's funny, we're almost like one to one for administrative support to, uh, to, uh, to agents in the field. And I think that's one of the things that makes us a little bit unique, makes us a little bit different is the amount of support that agents have when they, when they sort of come into our ecosystem. So that's kind of what the, what the structure looks like for, uh, for the real estate group. Yeah. And then, you know, when we first met, one of the things for us was like, okay, well, how do we hire an ISA? How do we, how do we recruit agents? That sort of thing. Uh, how do we hire an you know, someone to our ops team. And so one of the cool things about you guys or, or Joe was like, you're like, Hey, like, listen, like, why don't you, I'll, I'll just jump on a call with you and we'll just do it together. He's yeah. like, what? I was like, I've never heard of any, anybody do that with He's like, yeah, yeah. Just call me. We'll book a call and we'll just go, go at it. And I'm like, okay. So you helped us hire our, our first couple ISAs, which is awesome. Um, and, but Joe, um, I, I think you do. You come from the like corporate background, like you said, finance, working uh, as branch manager, like uh, over branch managers and in uh, and, and big banks. Um, how do you think about hiring and like what is the hiring process? As I know we're thinking about that a lot now. I know other yeah. other folks are as well. How are how are you thinking about that? And what's the process the, or the process? Process. I like that. <laughs> Uh, that's a really great question. So for me, um, the one thing I want to put out there is I will hire for attitude before I will ever hire for aptitude. Now, what we've created, we have systems, we've got processes, we've got a whole downloadable playbook. We have, and we've actually created a brand new product or, uh, called the Sims Agent Academy. And we, you can kind of ask me about that later on, but um, it's funny. So I would take somebody who pumped gas, but is a self-started, motivated, inspiring individual who just needs help getting the will to win and be given the tools. I would take that man, woman, I would take that person a hundred times before I'd take an agent that came in that said, hey, I did a hundred deals last year, I'll do 150 this year, but I'm a solo flyer, just leave me alone. I will take attitude over aptitude any day. And on our real estate team, we take on about one out of every 20 people that apply. Hmm. For me, culture is paramount. Now, I can't motivate anybody. 
I just, it's, it's not a, a thing. It's like a whole like 1980s concept. I remember my dad as a kid reading books on how to motivate his team. And nowadays people either come motivated or they don't. And there's nothing that I can do to fix that. But what I can do is I can inspire the will to win. I can show up every day. I can, you know, hold people accountable. I can help people learn the processes and the structure. I can plug and play. But what I can't do is motivate anybody in this industry. And so many times, uh, it's one of the biggest mistakes I've made in team building in the last 20 years, is hiring top producers that are not that are not a team fit. So my process is very much just ask questions. Once I've asked a question, I will shut up and listen. So I've got like a list of 10 questions that I go through. Um, and it's not just like, you know, again, if it's somebody maybe who's been in real estate six months or a year, a lot of people say, well, you know, talk to me about your production level. Talk to me about your sphere. For me, it's tell me a time when you've had to elevate yourself above your peer group. Tell me a time where you were number one. I'll lean more heavily on that question than I will about past sales. Hmm. Yeah. Just kind of how I roll, right? And, it's, and I'm very blunt with it. I'm also very blunt that if I think that there's something that's an issue, if I think that it's not going to be a cultural fit, I'm more than happy to call somebody out right there in the interview and just say, like, look, I don't think this is going to work. Yeah. You know, you, you guys, um, you have a lot of great agents on the team and, and a lot of great people that work with you guys. And I think that I, I think of Sims organization, I think of a lot of like self responsibility. And I think that comes back to the structure that was put in, put in place with the compensation and the collaboration and, and the sharing and that sort of thing, which is and the, like the go giver attitude. I, I think that was that was one of the big things that popped up for me. But how, how do you think? Um, why do you think that is? And how do you think you instill like that self responsibility for people just to like continue and the, and the accountability? I think you guys helped us out a lot with accountability and keeping people accountable and with the huddles and, and that sort of thing. I mean, what is what do you think that? Why do you think that is? Why? How do you? Where does that come from? For us, culture is absolutely paramount, and I think it's about having the right people, like the right asses in the right seat at the right time. So I think that, um, again, culture is huge. So we've built a culture of accountability. So we have a tracker that our agents fill out, right? So we have company standards. I don't have expectations of anybody. I've built company or we have built company standards. So there is standards of performance. In order to get plugged into the system that we have, you know, again, it's not just we're going to take 50% of your commission and that's it. But we have things that we hold ourselves accountable to. You know, we want to make sure that everybody, even, even an agent in their first year of production is making a six figure income. We want to make sure that we've got, you know, 100% of agents hitting at least two deals per month. Like that's our goal. So we're constantly pushing ourselves to make sure that we're pushing somebody else to help get there. And, you know, for us, um, we built such an amazing infrastructure that we know if we do fall short on those commitments, like that commitment to excellence for each excellence for each and every agent, like I, I can't sleep at night. So we've built things in, like we have a morning huddle. So every morning, 9 a.m., uh, inside our inside sales agents, our administrative team, we all get on a call and it's open to all the agents on the team as well. And we go through like, hey, what do you have going on today? Like, what's your goal? What does success look like for you? But most importantly, John, what support do you need today that you might not have needed yesterday? That is such a key piece. What can I do for you to move your business along that I did not do yesterday? How can I be better? How can I help you? What are the roadblocks? What's holding you back? Right? It's not about me. It's about them. So that's one piece. Second piece, we have an afternoon wrap-up call. How did you do? What held you back? But most importantly, John, what are you grateful for today? What an amazing question. Are you asking yourself, are you asking your team, what are you grateful for? Hmm. Right? So not always looking at what didn't go well, but you know, what went right? Getting both sides of that coin. Um, I'm a believer that for anybody to succeed in the real estate world, you know, 95% of it is mindset. I love that. It truly is. So it true. truly is. And it's, 
And there's four things that I believe that new agents or any agent needs to fix a mindset problem. Do you know what those four things are, John? What's that? Number one, first and foremost, you need a book. What book speaks to your soul? And I'm not talking about that Kindle e-reader shit. Shoot, you guys are in the Bible Belt and I just swore I apologize. No, it's good. <laughs> we're, we're, full, we're full send here. Um, yeah, there you go. I'm Italian, man. So I'm going to talk with my hands. I'm going to like lean back in a chair and I'm going to swear. Number one, have a book. Have a book that speaks to your soul. For me, I have two. And you can actually see it like right there. If I spun my camera, you can see the red of the spine of the book. The book, The Go-Giver, lives in my office as a constant reminder that there are five rules of stratospheric success that I need to live out each and every day to be the best version of myself, not only just for me, but for my family, for my business partners like Jason and Caitlin and all the people, for you and for all of our coaching students and all of our clients, right? There's five things I need to do. So number one, have a book. My second book is The Mamba Mentality by Kobe Bean Bryant, RIP Mamba. I will admit I did cry the day Kobe died. Maybe it's a West Coast thing. I saw him when I was a kid. I uh, saw him play with Shaq uh, the last time they were in Vancouver before our beloved Grizzlies were ripped away from us and sent to Memphis. <laughs> the Mamba mentality, right? You know, and what that teaches us is never sacrifice as a father. Never sacrifice our relationships as a husband. Never sacrifice your commitment to your team. Never sacrifice the commitment to your craft. How do you make that work? Read the Mamba mentality. Kobe will explain it. That's an amazing book. So have a book. Number two, have a place. Superman needed his Fortress of Solitude. Batman needed his Batcave. I need this office. This is where I come to ask the universe questions. And you know how, like, John, you know how you're ever, like, just thinking and talking out loud in a safe space? And it's funny how the answer pops in your head. That's called intuition. But you need to be in an environment where you can invite intuition in. This is mine. For Jason and I, the space that we have is sacred. So you need to have a space. Number three, you need to have a mantra. What is the story that you tell yourself? And here's the two stories I tell myself, John. Number one is a, is a quote. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. It's an old Mike Tyson I, sure. I love that, man. Um, very quickly, it's being replaced by excuses are the nails used to build the house of failure. I also like that one. But everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. For me, that is have a plan. And in the face of adversity, double down on your plan. Don't panic. Stick to the plan. Right? The other thing that I is my why that I'm very, very tethered to. So again, my, my secondary mantra, John, is I know what it's like to sit in a car and have to phone my beautiful wife of eight years, Jennifer, and say, I don't know where the mortgage payment's coming from. And I will show up every single day. I don't, like, I had COVID. How many coaching calls did I miss in the throes of COVID, John? How many do you think? Yeah, zero. 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 Why did I do that? I have a commitment to myself, my students, my family, my team, because I know what it's like to suffer. I know what it's like to have nothing. So I show up every day so that you and Rachel never have to have that conversation. That's how, that's how tied I am to my why. So that's the third thing you need, right? Either your, your why or your mantra. The fourth thing I think is the, I think is the most critical is to have a mentor. So again, a place, a book, a mantra, a mentor. Success always leaves clues. And I think people just try to reinvent the wheel. They try to do something new and exciting, but you don't need to. John, if you want to see into the future, you stand on the shoulders of giants. Align yourself with people who have forged the path ahead of you. R&D, baby. Rip off and duplication. I love that. Take what other people have done and you know, adopt it, but just add your personality. Add your spin. So those are the four keys to having a mindset. I just totally went on a rant and a tangent, but I hope anybody watching this, if there's one thing you take away, fix that mindset. I mean, we're going into a market where 10% of agents are going to be doing 90% of the deals. It's true. How do, how do they get there? A lot of it? It's true. It's between the years.
It's so true. It's so true. Well, Joe, um, I, I really appreciate it. I mean, that, that's so valuable, that stuff. Um, and mindset, I, I, I agree with you. It's, it's, it's everything. It really, it really is. It, it's everything. And having the right mindset um, to, get, to do it day in, day out, get up, continue to do it when things get tough. It's, it's half the battle. I mean, it's, it's honestly, it's just showing up, right? Like 80% of it's just showing up. Oh, just show up every day. Yeah, show up, but show up with intention. Have that business mm-hmm. plan. Know what you need to do in a day, a week, a month, a year. Figure out that time management piece, right? Like just there's certain tweaks that you can do. Get yourself a coach. And I think one of the things that we coach to, and I wish we had a sort of, wish we had a coach to this more in the beginning, was fix your health. Fix your relationships. From that comes wealth. Yeah. Health, relationships, then wealth. I love that. I mean, because that was the the intention of, of the podcast. And I think that's what we we all embody, right? When we start getting there, we make a little bit of money. We realize like it's there's there's more to it. It's beyond the sale, right? There's there's more to it than just real estate. Obviously, once we get all of this dialed in too, this becomes really easy. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you know what, like. Look for business partners, look for people that you can collaborate with, people you can mastermind with. Like, again, anybody listening to this, John, who hasn't actually sat down and met you in person, right? Uh, And talked about some of the value you guys bring. I mean, like you are like the listing king of the space and treasure coast, man. Like you have a listing process that we've actually adopted some of the pieces. You have the most dialed in like FISBO uh, expired and open house process. So Find somebody that you can not only just brain dump on, but somebody that you can collaborate with and learn. I mean, the things that you and Rachel have taught us that we've in turn taught our team. I mean, there's a like this year, uh, we're going to hit again around like the 350, maybe just shy of 400 units. Last year, we hit 325 with you know, 3.9 million in, in, in combined GCI. We're not the smartest ones in the room. We're just the ones who collaborate with people that are like, like you. So I just appreciate the opportunity to come and chat with you, man. I, I always love catching up. And the one sort of one final thing I'll say is if you are a new agent, if you are a team leader, invest in training in the beginning. I think that that is such a critical step that is missed. Um, the industry fail rate is around like you know 86 to 87 percent. Our fail rate at the Sims Real Estate Group for new agents in their first two years, guess what it is, John? What do you think our fail rate is? Yeah, I think, I mean, I remember you guys telling us it's like it's like 100% retention or like at least 95% retention. Is that right? 3% of agents on our team have not lasted two years. And I will put this in as well. The one agent, the one agent who didn't make it in our seven years of existence a uh, government worker ended up sort of going back, no, no slight against anybody working in a union or government, but it's a different mentality in real estate um, and just didn't have the support at home and just decided that, you know, again, like a nine to four thirty Monday to Friday is where he wanted to be. So again, he just kind of was like, look, this isn't going to work for me. Had some issues at home uh, and backed off. But I will say this first 90 days, he had two deals under his belt. So have, I know, right? Like this, this dude could have been a rock star. But if you are a new agent, if you are a team leader and you are looking at scaling up, have some type of a program or onboarding mentorship where people can just plug in and learn the right way. Because a lot of times people create like, yeah, come in, I'll train you, I'll mentor you. Well, number one, your production tanks because you're dealing with them their production never gets off the ground because they're waiting on you. Yeah, it's so, so true. And, and you guys helped us out with that. It's, it's having the onboarding process. We're having really a process for everything, right? But, but especially onboarding process. What does the 90-day onboarding process look like? How are we getting someone successful? How are we holding them accountable to what, we, what, what our plan is that we just talked about and making sure they can hit every benchmark along the way and ultimately being successful, right? So I agree. And, and- what we did is we we just created a brand new onboarding program. Like it's we we've never done it before, um, but we actually called it the Sims Academy. Oh, cool! And so what it is is it's a standalone program that takes like literally day one. Here's what you do, all the way through ninety days. Uh, it's a commitment. Every day has homework. It is live. 
sessions, nothing pre-recorded. <clears throat> it is live sessions. Um, so it's myself, uh, Jason, and uh, a managing broker out of California named James Nichols. The three of us put this program together. So it is, uh, you're about seven and a half hours of live training per week, starting November 7th and ending around Valentine's Day. Hmm. For all, all new agents coming on board or? All, all yeah, agents? so basically, so how it works is um, we have, we, we haven't put the marketing machine behind it yet. We haven't really done much with it other than map out the program. It starts with a workbook, starts with your Zoom invites, and basically like day one, you're learning how to leverage your sphere, right? So day one, session one is here's the text messages you need to send out. Here's how you create a newsletter, your homework, send these text messages out, send us your newsletter. And if you go the first week and you have not done the five days worth of homework uh, out of the course. Nice. Love it. Week two, right? Then it goes week two, branding and marketing. You show up and you've got a Gmail address or a Hotmail address out of the course. Your assignment is to, again, get your Google business up and running, get your pages up and running, content created. So by the time the 90 days is done, you know every single process in real estate. You have learned it in a very small group-based setting. We have held you accountable to about 30 to 40 hours of scripting over 90 days. You know everything. We've even got so granular as you will be able to calculate absorption rate like in your mind so that when you're having a conversation of how's the market, you're able to say, well, currently right now, you know, we are in a balanced market. I know it looks like a buyer's market, but actually it's not. Here's what the absorption rate in my county tells us. So we're showing people absolutely everything that they need. And for team leaders, this is a way to plug in and we do your training for you based on what we know works. So, yeah. And that was so helpful for, for us getting onboarded, right? Just like here, here, plug and play. Here, just train, train everybody, train the staff, train, train the ISAs, train the transaction coordinator, train everybody. Oh, man, yeah. And it, it takes up so much time off of us, right? As, as, as rainmakers or people, you know, generating the income. It takes so much time to do all that stuff. And, and it's, it's so helpful. Um, so yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's, that's really incredible. So anybody wants to learn more, you can hit us up. You can email us at info at Sims coaching systems.com. Set up a call, reach out to John. Um, please contact John. John will put you in touch with us. Um, but yeah, we're also looking for smaller class sizes in the middle. So there won't be any class sizes larger than like 15 to 20 people. So small, intimate, uh, it's a huge commitment and we do reserve the right to kick people um, nice. Like this is designed for success. There's a reason that we have a 3% loss rate on new agents in their first two years. Like this is literally what our people are getting trained on by Jason and I day in, day out. Um, and so again, team leaders, this is what's missing. Individual agents, this is where your textbook closes and your business actually kind of opens up. Perfect. So, Perfect. yeah. Perfect. Joe, so is that where they, everyone can find you at, at simscoachingsystems.com? Yeah, right. You got okay, it. Cool. You got it. Simscoachingsystems.com. And, um, you know, again, you can email me. It's joseph at simscoachingsystems.com. Um, again, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, um, you know, at Sims Coaching Systems. And, um, you know, again, we have people who we have business, business development managers who are here who are designed to answer any coaching questions. And I'll tell you, we give a lot more away for free than we ever charge for. So if anybody out there is struggling, anybody's, you know, again, like having issues adjusting to the market, you need some coaching, some support, some content, reach out to us. You can schedule a call right from a Calendly link that we have off of our simscoachingsystems.com site. And uh, for us, man, we just want to say at the end of the day that maybe we impacted 1% of the real estate agents in North America. That's our goal. 1% of people doing the right thing, leading with value, leading with heart, and um, you know, being sort of inspirational leaders in the community. That's our So goal. true. These guys are the real deal. Connect with them. I'm, I'm a firsthand on uh, knowledge of that. So, But Joe, appreciate it so much, man. Thanks for spending time with us. Oh, man. Always, it's always good to see you. I'm sorry I missed you in Vegas. Like, Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I kind of feel – I don't know. It just wasn't the same. Yeah, Jack. next one. It wasn't the same without you, Rachel. 
Um, eating uh, White Castle sliders at like 2 a.m. in... But we're thinking about, what is there in there? Like growth con? Growth, isn't there a growth con? I think we're thinking about going to. Like, we're really like... I think so. I think, um, and there's one in Cabo. Oh, no, that's, that's, so there's that one might be what I'm going to. That, it might be. So, um, although I, I said this because Jason kept bugging me about Vegas. Like, I didn't know I was going to Vegas until, like, literally, it's like, hey, Joe, you are coming to Vegas. So I was like, oh, man. Um, so Jason is going to Cabo. Uh, he's going to be hosting a VIP event for, um, you know, again, anybody sort of like, uh, again, you, Rachel, um, and then just a lot of our coaching students, uh, expansion partners, anybody who doesn't know us as well, like just come hang out, find out what we're about. So, um, we actually had a penthouse party at the Aria. So we rented out the 2200 square foot penthouse for like three days. Nice. We had two DJs, full bar, two bartenders, we had light shows. It was like a freaking like Iron Butterfly concert. In there. Nice. It was awesome. Nice. So we're going to be doing the same thing in Cabo. Um, it's a chance for people to unwind, connect, mastermind. And then we talk about any sort of new products that we have coming up. So I will not be in Cabo. Jason will be. So you can look for him there. And uh, again, please, you can sort of follow us at Sims, uh, at Sims Coaching Systems on Instagram. And you can find out kind of where we're going to be and what we're going to do. But Everywhere we go, we hold a bit of a, like a mastermind session, sometimes really small. And it's sitting around like a little, you know, cabana in, uh, in Orlando eating burgers that are probably <laughs> 10 times more expensive than they should be. Uh, or hit those parties in Vegas. But for us, we, we like to have fun. So it's not just always business, business, business. Um, for us, we like to give back to the people as well, right? So we're always the first people to throw a bit of a party invite people down and just and just hang out and learn so yeah uh, I, I will not be in cabo but again i did say that for vegas too so who knows who knows, who knows john who knows, right. cool joe well who knows appreciate you soon. yeah um enjoy that wintry north and uh we'll, we'll see you soon <laughs> well i'll tell you what you you you, you put your job ad out maybe i'll apply and i'll get the <laughs> right. family down to these space and treasure yes yeah, yeah yeah all right joe take it easy all right john Hey, bye-bye.